All right, guys, it looks like there's just going to be the eight of us tonight. I had quite a few people email me and tell me they were going to be out. Probably a good night for it. We're going to be really brief tonight. Um, I'm going to let you out early, partly because you slogged it out so hard last week, but also partly because this is just kind of setting up for the next couple of tools we're going to introduce. Um, these tools we, we have somewhat looked at, somewhat not. Um, these are pretty standard basic tools that if you continue with GIS are going to be in your arsenal from now on. They're just really basic, but super, super, super useful tools. We're gonna look at five tonight and we're gonna kind of at the end of looking at those five tools, go through and look at using them together and what they do. And after this class, when you kind of have seen the difficult way to go through this, I'm going to show you another tool that makes it a little easier. If you could go to Microsoft Teams and download the tools called analysis tools from that folder, we're going to use those shapefiles today. When you get those downloaded, go ahead and bring everything into your map from that folder. And I would like for you to also bring in the NAEP imagery, and I know that's your favorite, but we kind of need it today. If you'd like to, you can set your map up like this. We're not going to get to the three different mind types until towards the end of class. We're going to start with uh, looking at the other shape files and the NAEP imagery. So I just set this up so hopefully you can see it pretty well, but whatever works for you is fine with me. One thing that's going to come up a couple of times in these tools is the XY tolerance. And we haven't really talked much about the source of this data, but somebody created all of this data somewhere along the line and drew it just the way that we learned how to draw new blank shape files. In the case of the roads and the streams, they just went in and followed the roads and the streams, just kind of clicking along the way. And the the precision of your data is really um, dependent on who drew it and how, how careful they were about that. So I'm going to zoom in and look at the XY tolerance or the precision of this data and actually look at comparing them to the NAEP imagery where the streams and highways fall. Here's a good example of a stream. You can see in the background the, of the NAEP imagery the stream is actually kind of weaving through here and meandering through the floodplain there, but the blue line that's tracking the stream is very generally drawn across that area. And if you go to select that stream, you'll see the segments of it. I'm going to set that as my only selectable layer. The segments of it are pretty short and, and kind of angular. This isn't drawn very precisely, which means the XY tolerance on this is very loose. 
So if we're looking to, to say something about this data, you need to be aware of how well done the data is. It may not suit your purposes. You may actually have to go in and if you needed that to track your stream very closely or to do precise work, you may have to create it yourself, but you can always take something like this and modify it. So the highways are a little bit better, but they're still gonna be a bit off. Highways tend to be a um, little more easily followed for the whoever's drawing them. Let me find a good example in here. You can see here the highway is kind of just a little bit off. It's not nearly as bad as the stream. You can see the highway running through here. And it doesn't track quite right, but it follows a little better. This one's got a much tighter XY precision or an XY tolerance. So I'm showing you this because we're going to be asked every time we run a tool how precise we want to be with the XY tolerance. So setting this up so you understand what that's asking. The first tool I want to introduce is one we've actually already looked at, but it came up a couple of times um, as we've gone through this. There seemed to be some confusion about the difference between clip for the raster images and clip for the shape files. There are two different clips, and I'm going to open my toolbox up and show you where they both are. But this is a fairly important distinction whenever my toolbox decides to open. I'm just going to pin it open so it stays out of the way. The ones that we're going to look at today is the analysis tool, and we want to extract this tool. And you might, if you're, if you're keeping these handouts, I give you right across the top that this is for shapefiles. This analysis tool is strictly for shape files. It will not work on raster images. The one we used previously was a data management tool under raster. There's raster processing. This clip, same name, will only work on raster. It won't work on shape files. This is the one where we have to specify, check that box and say specify cut to the limits of the shape file instead of the extent of the shape file. Today, we are going to look at the clip. And I'm, this is, Pretty simple and pretty easy to follow, but I'm setting this up for the next class. Um, we can do all of this basically in one, one go, everything we're getting towards by using multiple tools. But one of, one of the things I want you guys to take away from every class, but especially these next couple classes, whatever tool you have in your tool set that you know how to use, use it. You don't have to remember that there's another tool that's actually kind of complex and you don't remember all the ins and outs. If you can get to the same end result using three different little tools, do it. There is absolutely no reason. And I'll, I'll jokingly call that cheating. And I'll show you a couple of little cheats here along the way. But that is not cheating. Your end result for GIS is your map. However you get there is fine. So if you have 20 little tools along the way to get somewhere, more power to you. You don't have to do the most efficient, most direct route if you don't remember how to do that. So we're going to take the least efficient route today to look at some of these mines. We'll talk about the more complex one later, but today we're just going to kind of walk through a couple of these tools and using them to get to the same point. All right, so what I'd like to do is use that first clip. And I want to clip the highways and streams both to Silverbow County, but I can only do it one at a time. So I'm going to take the highways, clip them to Silverbow County. My input features are my highways. My clip features are Silverbow County. And here it's asking me for that XY tolerance. This is how tight does your data actually match reality. If it's really loose, you set a high tolerance. In this case, it's a little better than the stream, so we can set this. I'd say maybe this is probably off by about 20 meters in some places. That's about as high as it goes. So we'll say that this is, this is okay. It's not, it's not great, but it's okay. So we'll set a fairly low tolerance and just make sure you put it where you want it. I'm gonna start a new folder so I don't overload this.
So I just put that to the limit of the shape file. Maybe my end goal here is to look at just, end up mapping just what's in Silverville County. I don't have NAEP imagery that extends just to Silverville County. So I'm gonna end up processing that. I don't wanna show everything outside of Silverville County. Um, let's see, oh, I was gonna do streams too. Just go ahead and clip the streams to Silverville County as well. And this one's a lot looser, so I'm gonna put 100 meters on this one. It's got a much more poorly drawn stream layer. Not many streams in Silverbow County, according to that layer. All right, so the exact opposite, of course, that we talked about last time is erase. Anything we want to erase from this shape file that's outside of Silverbow County. Does anybody remember where the erase tool was? Oh, overlay. It's on the top of these handouts I gave you, just in case you ever actually look at them. Uh, print them for fun. So do the same thing, erase everything inside and outside of Silverbow County for the highways, or I'm sorry, everything outside of, inside of Silverbow County, erase from the highways and erase from the streams. Same thing, choose the original layer, Silverbow County, and watch your XY tolerance. If you leave that blank, it's going to assume your data is absolutely perfect, totally precise. I'm getting colorful here just to show you the difference. Um, what I was looking at showing was zooming in on maybe I want to display something in Silverbow County differently, but I want to show that it actually extends out. I have the option of taking this file and doing what I just did and maybe blow up the size of Silverbow County as the kind of area that you want the reader to focus on or something to that effect. You have all these little options that are simple little tools that do something really powerful for you that's very helpful. So I can clip those in and out, but I don't really have the option to do that with the raster. If I wanted to just focus on Silverbow County and I've, I've done this clip and I'm only interested in that area, I can't really get rid of that raster image outside of there, but I have the option to cheat, quote unquote, we have a couple of tools to do that. One thing you can do, you know how to draw a shape file. You know how to create a new blank shape file. You can go in to Art Catalog, say, I'm gonna create an entirely new blank, blank polygon shape file. Give it a coordinate system. I don't care what it is. I'm just gonna use this for the moment to do something else. I'm going to draw that shape file as a giant box around Silverbow County and then erase out of that from Silverbow County so that I basically create a white box around Silverbow that looks like I have clipped my raster image. Does that make sense? Maybe it will when we do it. So I wanna create that feature from my new shape file, just draw a giant rectangle that falls outside of the bounds of my map.
And then I can go in and erase that shape file. I take that shape file up and put it at the top of my list, everything else is buried. And as far as the reader can tell, when I go in to set this up, you can't tell that that NAEP imagery exists outside of Silver Bow County. So this is an example of what I'm calling cheating. It's not cheating. It's using a really simple tool to do something very effective because you don't remember how to do the raster clip. You can't remember where that tool was, or you've got this massive NAEP file, you don't want to clip the entire United States. You just want to do something simple and quick to effectively display your data the way you want it. You follow me? Really talkative tonight, huh? Okay, so we have one other tool. I'm going to remove that so it goes away. We have one other tool that will effectively do the same thing, and that's our buffer tool. We're going to look at the buffer tool for a couple of different things. But the buffer tool does exactly what it sounds like. It'll buffer off of your shape files. If you buffer off of a line, you have a couple of different options. You can buffer to one side or the other. You can buffer all the way around. On a polygon, you can buffer inside or just outside of the polygon. You have a couple of different ways to run that. So we're gonna run this buffer tool a couple of times. That one is in proximity. It's another analysis tool. Go ahead and open up buffer. Set your input features to Silverbow County. We're going to run a buffer on Silverbow County. How far you want that to go is up to you. Your linear unit, I'm going to set mine to let's say 10 miles. Actually, I'm going to set it to 100 or 1,000 meters just at first to show you this tool. Then we'll go back and do 100 miles. We have a bunch of different options in here. But if all you want to do is buffer, you don't need to worry about any of this because this is running ad additional um, information. Do you want a full buffer? Do you want inside? Do you want left side? How do you want to run this? Do you want the whole thing? Do you want your end pipe to be round? Or well, that's actually more applicable to the lines. Do you want to do the geodesic? Remember, if you're doing a large area, that assumes that there's an arc to the planet and you're following a, a curve instead of a flat surface. And do you want to dissolve anything in this field. If you're dissolving none, you're not going to be able to check any of these. If you dissolve all, it's going to dissolve all of these, assume they're all checked. But if you go to list, you can specify what you want to, to dissolve within that field. And we'll talk about this here in a moment with the roads and the streams, but these are all of your fields in your attribute table. So for now, let's just run the full with no, no dissolve type. Just run that and see what 100 meters looks like. So I did a full dissolve at 100 meters. That means it dissolved everything inside my shape file and put a 100 meter boundary around the outside. Not really what I'm going for if what I'm trying to do is hide my raster, but definitely has its purpose if that's maybe how I wanted to dissolve my raster or uh, that's how I wanted to clip my raster out. Maybe I wanted a little extra boundary around Silverbow County. I didn't want to clip just those lines. Doing that might work. Let's run that tool again but run it on the outside only and uncheck that buffer so you can see it when we run it. Come on. So this time I'm going to set it to 100 or 10 miles or something like that, just something big. But instead of doing the full dissolve, I'm going to do outside only. Not really does it worried about whether it's planar or geodesic and I don't really want to dissolve anything. So I'm going to leave everything else and just run that at 10 miles. So this time I didn't pick a big enough boundary. If I had set that to 50 miles or something, this would have worked a little better. But 10 miles really does give me a pretty good area that I can then zoom in on that looks like it's cropped to Silverbow County when I set that up in my map. So really simple tool, really effective output. Whenever it decides to pop up.
But where this also is much more effective, I'm gonna uncheck that one. Where this is more effective is, in this case, we've got three different mind types and the end goal for this particular class is to figure out where these minds are located. So what I wanna do is say they're maybe within 10 miles of highways. Maybe they're within three miles of streams, something like that. I have this information. So what I can do is basically run an intersect and say, all right, well, I, I know how to look and see where the buffer is 10 miles on the stream. So how many of those mines fall within that buffer? I can use my clip tool to do that. I have two different tools. I put a 10 mile buffer around my highways and then I clip my files to that buffer. Does that make sense? So let's run that buffer tool on a, well, first let me open up the Montana streams. We'll look at the, at the attribute table in the fields. So we've got all these different names in here. I think there are multiples. Yeah, we've got multiple beaverhead rivers, multiple big muddy creeks, multiple big hole rivers. So in this case, these are the fields I want to dissolve to make all of the big beaverhead rivers one river, all of the big hole rivers one big hole river. So when I run the dissolve on this one, I'm sorry, the buffer, when I run the buffer on this one to put a, a buffer on it, I set my dissolve type. I can set that by name to tell it that I want to dissolve all of those into one single line. So I'm going to do Montana streams. I'm going to set my dissolve type to the list and then say by name. And what were we going for? The buffer of 10 miles? Now here, because this is a line, we have a couple of different options. You can do the full all the way around that line, 10 miles in either direction, or you can do 10 miles to the left, 10 miles to the right. And because this is a line, we can do a round end type or a flat end type. We'll run it for the round and I'll show you the difference because I can't really draw it on the board for those who are watching on Zoom. So just go ahead and run that, but run that dissolve on the name field. If you zoom out to the entire state, I didn't run mine just to the clip of Silver Bow County, you should get a whole bunch of different little worms all over your screen. 10 miles is a pretty big radius around those streams. I'm going to put them back up where you can see them, see how they fall on there. That's 10 miles on either side of each stream. If you zoom in and look at the end type, what they've done is go 10 miles past the end. If you put a flat end type on it, it would cut it right here at the end. So maybe what you're interested in is within 10 miles of the river period or the stream period. But if you're looking to stick within 10 miles to the left or right, you can do that as well. Run that buffer tool on Montana highways. I've got so many in my map already, I can't find anything. This time just do, do a flat end type and run a left or a right side type so you can see what that looks like. And if you wanna dissolve it, go ahead and dissolve it, but you definitely don't have to. You should be familiar with this one. This file we looked at when we set up the roads to be a different style based on what type, they, what type of road they were and then labeled them by their route number. So if you wanna look at route type in this case, that's a good one to dissolve by. It'll dissolve it down to just interstates, just roads, just um, highways. And I think, I can't remember what the fourth one was, but there are four in there. So that'll break it down to just the type of road. And I'll do a 12 mile. Well, actually, let me make this one smaller. Make it a five. It's just five. I just mis mistyped that. So in this case, when I put the highways on there, you'll see they're only on one side. They buffered only to one side of that. We've got five miles, I think it was to the right of the highways. And that's the topographic direction 
Although I honestly don't know how GIS knows what the topography looks like in this case, but that's what they say. It's, it's a topographic direction. So um, let's see. Merge. It's the other one fairly easy. Oh, I guess I should show you this. The highways I dissolved by route type. So instead of having everything split up, we all have we just have interstate Montana and US now. It breaks it down into just those single business interstate Montana and US. So now I've got four different route types instead of all the different groupings. Okay, let's see. I'm going to get rid of, I'm going to clear some of this clutter out because I'm having trouble keeping up with everything. So if you want to take a second and clear out some of this, we don't need anything except the original files. Okay. So you also have the dissolve tool that by itself is separate from buffer. It does essentially the same thing. Well, it does exactly the same thing as the dissolve and the buffer did, but it is its own standalone tool. Dissolve is in, oh, data management generalization. They like to hide their tools in goofy places. Again, where these are located is at the top of each of the handouts on this type of tool, but Dissolve does what we just looked at doing. It'll take various components that are under the same name in your attribute table and dissolve them out. So I, I'll just run that same tool on the highways. When you pick what you wanna dissolve by, you're effectively saying that you can also pick more than one field. You can dissolve by a couple of different fields if you like. That's probably going to run it down to almost nothing in the attribute table. Oh, no. I dissolved it by too much. I didn't. Dissolved it by too much. It didn't really dissolve anything, but the dissolve feels pretty obvious what it does. It makes breaks everything down to whatever you decide to, to do it by. And finally, the merge tool we have looked at. We have looked at in the past, but there was some confusion when I talked about the difference between merge and mosaic. Mosaic was what you did for your homework where you took multiple rasters and you stitched them together. Merge does the exact same thing for shapefiles. So again, we have two different tools. Um, in this case, at least they're different names, but the merge tool will combine the different files to a single file for you in the case of shape files. So what I'd like you to do, and this is, this is all I'm gonna to ask tonight, merge the three different mine types. What I'm interested in is a couple of different questions. How many mines are in Silverbow County? Number one. How many mine, mines are within a certain distance of the rivers? Number two. And how many mines are within, I think it was a certain, distance of the streams. And that's all we're going to do tonight because this is all getting to the point of trying to figure out a, the answer to a question that you want to ask of the data that should be fairly straightforward, but there's a more complex tool to use to get to all of this. And if you can't figure out how to work that tool, all of these little steps along the way are a terrific way to get to that end goal. So what you need to do is first merge, load, place, or an unknown Mind types. Remember where the merge tool is? Yes. Now, when you set this up, 
just like the other tools, your field map, all of these are the pieces and parts of those, those three different shape files. If there's something in here you don't want, you can highlight it and remove it. You can remove all of these different fields from your merge. And conversely, if you want to change something and add something, you can add a field here. And just like we did when we set up the editor, you can set up the type of field you want to add. Give, make it text, make it numeric, give it a field name, all of that. You don't need to do that right now, but I want you to be aware. When you look at these field map items down here, you have a couple of different options to work with that. So you don't need to delete anything from that, but just set up that merge to run. And pay attention to your fields. So I'm going to ask a series of questions that breaks this down using these tools. I want to know how many mines are in Silver Bow County. First of all, what's that? Oh, okay. seems like it's doing some sort of um, calculation error in that and that shouldn't be. You don't need the name for this. Uh, yeah, it's, it's up to you. It's going to slow you down a little bit, but this is just for looking at shape files. All right, so what's the next step? Tell me how many are in Silver Bell County? You have to click it. 131? 331. That sounds more likely. What did you do? Yeah, that's Getting creative, good. I was hoping you would clip it. But so, well, that's what I want you to do because the next question is going to be how many of those in Silverville County are within a distance of the river. So, in this case, since we're looking at these tools, clip it to Silverville County. I haven't said anything about the river yet. So let's see if I got the same number you did. I got 407. We want to clip our merged file to Silverbow County. So let's say our end goal here is to figure out how many mines are within five miles of a highway in Silverville County. The way to do that in this case is to merge those mines, clip them down to Silverville County, run a buffer, and clip them again, right? It's four really simple little steps, but it gets you down to answering a pretty simple question, really. So run, run that. How many are within five miles of a highway in Silverbow County? You don't have to buffer all of the highways for this Y to get that to that answer. Why? 
or not buffer or clip. You don't have to clip the highways to find out how many mines are in Silverbell County because you guys are killing highways close to but not inside of Silverbell County. Yep. So then you can have it. Yep, we clipped the mines to Silverville County. So the mine might be within five miles of a highway, but it's not a highway inside Silverville County. Um, when you select things, you have to do the table. I was just going at it this way at first. I know this is the wrong way that you want to select right now. It's, it's not wrong. Right. It's not the wrong way. It's just not wrong. I can't get it to come up to put my select in the menu. Oh, that's so yeah. 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 Oh, thank you. Okay. So I got 398. You said you got four something? Yeah. Interesting. I like I don't know. See, yeah. This is actually oh, exactly the point I scroll three and three and I did my exact same thing. Yeah. Yeah, I I do see it. Yeah, I was going to do that. So the difference between doing it through the attribute table is I might have files that are in there that are not listed at Silverbow County oh, okay. in the attribute table, but where they show up is within the bounds of Silverbow County. So that doesn't make it wrong, it just makes it different. <laughs> my point is, this is not helping my point. Yeah, my point is, it's awesome that you use a different way to do what you get to the same result, because those are still mines in Silverbow County according to that file. And I know you don't want us to do it this way, but... That's no, that's fine. Sorry. It's okay. We just already in the middle of it. It works. It was literally what I'm trying to teach you in class. Yeah. what you know. So if you do that and you export those select ones, you would have done the same thing I did by using the clip tool. So, so now clip GIS has a thousand ways to do everything, and you use the way you know how to do it. Uh, yeah, and then you clip the the mines in Silverbow County to the buffer of the rivers we find out how many I think it was a five mile buffer on the rivers. Okay, so do the buffer first. So we, we've clipped out all of the mines, we merged the mines in the state so that we have all of the mines. Then we clip them to Silverbow County. Now we want to know how many are within five miles of a river. So buffer then clip. Oh. oh no, I'm sorry, you're right, you're right. Oh, clip, okay. then buffer, then clip. So. <laughs> gotcha. All right, thank you. And we're doing everything that would load merge them. Yeah, I see what you're doing. Okay. And for X by tolerance, just like that, maybe at five miles. So your XY tolerance is how precise your data is. Your linear unit is five miles because that's how far away from the stream you want to go. Okay. But we can leave our XY tolerance blank because we're just going to assume in this case that it's actually precise and that is where the stream exists. Okay. Thank you. That's 230. Let's see what I get. So I got the buffer, I need to run the next clip. I'm not changing my names, so you'll see I've, I've got silly names up here, but 279, we're really close, which means we probably just did something slightly different or our merge ran slightly differently. If I had put a XY tolerance on it that was different from yours, that would change my results. So this is not about getting the number exactly right, but following the process. Is it like one out of 16? Um, I've been doing this really weird loading bar this whole time. Okay, well, while that's running, I'm going to show you, I, I showed you before, 
we, we have been typically looking at this in drawing order so that if you're on this far left in the table of contents, you're on this far less left button, lifts by drawing order. I can change my order by moving these around and it changes how they view on my map. A lot of you, I'm coming around and seeing you looking at them by their location. There's nothing wrong with that as long as you're aware of it. But we have a couple of other things here. When we have something unchecked, it's listed by visible or not visible. I have class or load and unknown listed as unchecked right now, so they're not visible. But this is the one that's going to become important next time. This last one is whether or not these are selectable features. So if I want to go in and select something, it needs to have this little blue thing lit up saying that it's selectable. If I unselect them, I can't select from those. those. Only those three now are selectable. So if I go in and drag across my map, I can only select from those three. And this is going to become important because the next thing we're going to talk about doing is going through this same analysis, but selecting by location. So we're actually going to tell this in an interactive way. I want you to select mines from this within Silverbow County that are five miles from a stream instead of going through these iterative steps we're going to use something called select by location. So I promise tonight would be very brief. This is a pretty quick one. Introduces some really heavy hitter tools, though. These tools are going to be something you use all the time if you continue with GIS, because they're just very simple, very powerful tools. But um, that's all I have for you tonight. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. You do not need to save this. We're going to use these files again, but not the ones we created, just the original files. So I'll put them back on Teams. You were good to go, yep.